Hey everyone, this is Crystal with Open to Public HVAC School. Today we're going to go over how to test heat sequencers and how they work. So today I thought we'd have a little fun and actually pull one of these apart so you can see what's going on in here. How this all looks inside because it's actually really cool. I took one apart today and just kind of studied it. First we'll get into how to test these and then we'll get to the fun part. These are a time delay relay and they have in here two metal plates. Now these are thermal and there's two metals which means it's a bimetal disc. So here this is a residential sequencer for your air handling unit. Here we apply our control voltage, which is our 24 volts. That is then going to heat up and cause this metal plate, or this bimetal plate rather, to flex, which pushes a pin up here to cause contact, the, the contacts to close essentially, and allow the 240 volts into your unit. Uh, some of you can have one, you can have two, you can have two on one plate, uh, and some even have three. Now, what's important to pay attention to is the time delay, and that's what these numbers stand for. This is gonna be your delay on heat, or the 24 volts going here, and that's the amount of time it's going to need for that thermal disk to heat up and flex. And then your cool down is going to be how long it's going to take for that disk to cool down and go back into the original shape. Thus opening the circuit, not allowing any of your voltage through. So let's get to it. How do you test heat sequencers. So what I'm using today is the SC260. Uh, a lot of beginner techs, and honestly, I love this thing. So I mean, these are really awesome to use. They're simple. I really like it because they're slim and they're easy to fit in um, my hand. But on just a normal meter, you should have this symbol, which means continuity. So make sure your meter is set on that symbol before you begin because we're wanting to make sure right off the bat if this is open or closed. This is a two stack. So when we place our leads on the sequencer, where we're going is since this is all one pole, we're going from end to end. And this is correct because we are not reading, we're not getting continuity. So on startup, these should be open. So from here to here, we're going to test. And from here to here, we're going to test. Now this bottom is for your 24 volts. So you don't need to check that unless you're just checking to make sure that you're getting your 24 volts. Always make sure you have your low side voltage before assuming a part is bad. You could just have something as simple as not having power. Now that we know it is open, don't assume that it's good. What we're going to do is now turn the thermostat on to heating and we're going to check this. Again, remember there is a delay, so you won't hear the relay, the contact points, close on some that have a longer delay. This one has a 1 to 20 second delay. So we'll give it just a moment for those contact points to line up. There's our close. And now both of these should be reading continuity. Perfect. Now, 
we're going to go ahead and remove our 24 volts. Uh, just make sure you remember where the wires go. We're going to let that disc go back to its original shape. And the delay on this is going to be between 40 to 110 seconds. Some of them can be longer like this. And there's our pop. So now this should be open. And here to here, open, perfect. So you can do a few cycles of this if you would like. Um, if you're wanting to test this at your unit, you can. If you're wanting to, say, jump your R to W for the heat to come on. Um, now, heat pumps, they're a little different because you'd have to jump a few things together in order for your emergency heat to come on. But for simplicity's sake, what we're going to do for our normal single-stage um, or just, sorry, normal air handlers is checking for continuity on each pole and making sure that the relay, or rather this disc, is not sticking and that it's bad. So that's why we want to at least check whether it's open or closed before the 24 volts are applied and if it is sticking, once the cool down has gone past and they're still not open again. So that's how we're going to check and make sure that is doing what it should be doing. Some of you that do even have a three stack, whether you have a single stack like uh, this guy here, or a double stack like this one, and there are some with three, uh, those are all going to be connected to that same timing. So whether it's a single, a double, a triple, they're all going to connect or close the circuit with the same delay. So keep that in mind when you're checking it. And I have noticed with some of the three stacks, it is just a nanosecond difference, but they should all open very, very similar, but same time, really quick. So let's get to the fun part. What does a sequencer look like on the inside? And obviously you can see you had to kind of get rough with it. These suckers are really put together well. And you can see I had to remove those clips here to get it off of there. Here at the top, that's our pole. And just to kind of show you what's underneath there, I had to pry this guy under here because there's a whole lot of glue, but just to show you what's underneath that part, you can see it's got that little indention and it's got this pole here. And there is a pin that pushes this up here to make that connection and close it so that we have that continuity all the way through and that voltage can just got a line straight into each strings. So here on the bottom of this you see these little hollow guys here and that pin is what goes into it little tiny pin that is pushed up and it's just the tiniest little movement here that you can see that contact so what's under this well here is your bimetal thermal disc come apart just like this. Really cool. And I can show you what this actually looks like. Um, there is where your 24 volts goes through. You can see this little guy right here that's going to push that up and 
flex. So let's put that down here. And I'll see if we can zoom in a little bit. You can kind of make out what's going on when I apply those 24 volts. All right. We're going to add our 24 volts. This is really fun. I was having fun hecking it up earlier. Just a second, you're going to see that pop. I'm always curious. Oh, there it goes. That is awesome. And you can actually see it just pop like that. I'm always curious about how things work. So when we're at the store, I like to pull things apart and just see what's going on inside of them. You know, see how they function. Because obviously, if you're going to talk to other people about it, how can you explain what you're looking for? if you don't know how it works yourself. So, let's remove our 24 volts. And then as this cools down, that thermal disk is going to go like this, just back in place. And the reason for these delays is you don't really want to have all of your coils come on at once. So there's that delay there so that they don't come on exactly the same time. And it's the same on cooldown. So hopefully here in the next few seconds, we can see that guy. Here we go, beautiful. So that is how, and by the way, don't touch this. If you ever pull in a part that you know is bad, don't touch that right away, it's really hot. Um, now you kind of understand and you know what's going on in here and what could be some reasons for failure. But this is a mechanical connection with that thermal plate, thermal bimetal plate. <laughs> Don't ask me what kind of metal that is because I haven't looked into it. But anyway, I hope this has been helpful for all of you. Thank you so much for joining me, guys, and I hope that you have a wonderful weekend and a great rest of your day. Take care.